guys, I'm Jeff Schneider, and today we're going to talk about how to create more interesting sounding chord progressions, because how many times have you heard something that sounds like this? Right, we have heard that so many times. It's a really popular uh, pop chord progression, and there's nothing wrong with it. It works really well for a certain style of music, but if you want your chord progressions to sound more interesting and more different and just have a little bit more spice, then this video is for you, so keep watching. All right, so we're going to start with the C major scale. Everything I talk about here is going to be in C, just for clarity's sake. So if you take that scale, and then we're going to build a triad off of each one of those scale degrees. So a triad is three notes. That's a C major triad. We're going to move the same shape over one key. That's D minor, then E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and finally B diminished. We're back at C major after that. Okay, so some of this is kind of basic, I know, but hang with me. It's going to, uh, it's going to get more interesting in a second. So what are we talking about here? Right. Take those, uh, I'm, not, I'm gonna say, um, I was gonna say seven chords because there are seven chords there, but that B diminished at the end. I want you to hold off on that one and just go with six, those six chords. The B diminished is a little funky there at the end and can lead to some problems. It does have its uses, but for now, hold off on the B diminished. All right, so now I'm gonna take those six chords and improvise a chord progression and let's see what happens. So already we're a lot more, it's sounding a lot more interesting than the progression I played a few minutes ago. And that's just because we added in some of those chords that you don't hear as often, like the, the D minor, or we can call that the two chord, because if C major is the one chord, because it starts on one, which is C, C is one in the key of C major, that's the two chord. D minor is the two chord. E minor is the three chord. That's right. Okay. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, even just including the, the D minor or the E minor, which is the three chord, as I said, that automatically, that immediately makes the chord progression sound more musical, more impressive, and more interesting than just your, your basic one chord, your four chord, your five chord, and then sometimes you hear that six chord. So I'm jumping around a little bit here, but just to go back a minute, that really basic chord progression I played at the beginning, that's C major, G major, A minor, F major. Those four chords are your basic chords that you hear in just about every single pop song on the radio. Uh, so as, as I was saying, as soon as you include some of those other chords, like the two chord and the three chord, uh, then you immediately get a more interesting sounding progression. So the next step, you want to make things sound even more interesting. What I want you to do is add in an extra note to each of those triads. So what that means is instead of just those three notes on a C major, we're now gonna make it a C major seven chord. And this is probably a chord you've heard before, it's probably a chord you've played before, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna take that same shape and move it up the scale just like we did with the triads. So C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, and that at the end is a B half diminished, or minor seven flat five. Again, we're gonna hold off on, on that chord for now, we'll get to it later. Uh, so we have six seventh chords. Six seventh chords. Is that what it's called? Or is it seven chords? Doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm now gonna just kind of mess around with some different chord combinations and, um, and see what happens here. I'm just gonna use seventh chords, and it's automatically gonna sound more interesting. really nice it's you know it sounds more jazzy because you have those seven you have the seven chords um, we're moving right ahead here guys uh, the next step you know all we all we just talked about is kind of like your basic harmony you know there are certain chord progressions that actually work really well that are worth mentioning you know when you have chords that move in fourths or fifths 
that's going to sound like Western harmony. What? Wait, what does that mean? Fourths and fifths. Well, you know that. Um, you know that you've heard this sound before. That's a G major going to a C major. G is the fifth of C. So if C is one, G is five. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. There's the G. C is the one, G is the five. So you have five going to one. Now, I said fourths or fifths. Well, you can think of it both ways because if you go from a G up to a C, that's a fourth. One, two, three, four. You can also think of it as going from a G down to a C, and that's, of course, a five. five. So fourths and fifths are the same thing. Um, what does this mean for you when you're coming up with chord progressions? Well, if you want to um, create a chord progression using the diatonic chords, and by the way, diatonic, if I haven't mentioned this already, it means chords that are within a certain key. So all of these chords are diatonic because they are all using the notes in the C major scale. And that is an important term to remember if you don't know it already. So as I was saying, if you are thinking about seventh chords and you want to create a chord progression, you can really rely on the fifths and the fourths, movements in fifths and fourths. For example, let's work backwards. C major seven. If you go up a fifth or down a fourth from there, you get this, G7. Now, let's take the G7 and go down a fourth from there, D minor 7. So what is that if we kind of go in, you know, forwards instead of backwards, we get D minor 7, G7, C major 7. Whoa, what is that? That's a 2-5-1, right? That's where the 2-5-1 comes from. It's harmony moving in fourths or fifths. Again, fourths and fifths are the same thing. Um, we can take it even further. Let's, let's go back to the C major 7. Back that up to the G7. Back that up to the D minor 7. Okay, so I'm going to ask you now, what is a fourth or a fifth away from D minor 7? Or I'll be more specific. What's a fifth up from D minor 7? What chord? Let's figure it out. D, let's say D is uh, one. We're gonna count up. One, two, three, four, five. So now we have A. And if we go find out what that chord is in, C major, in the key of C major, it's an A minor seven. I know this is a lot, guys, but I am really happy this is a YouTube video so you can pause it or rewind it and figure out what the heck I'm talking about here. And if if, uh, if it doesn't make sense, then get in touch with me or leave some comments down below and we'll figure it out together. So, um, yes, we're working backwards here from C major 7. C major 7, down a fourth, G7, down a fourth from there. D minor 7, down a fourth from there is that A minor 7 we picked up. And uh, let's take it one further. Let's go... Um, Let's go uh, down a fourth from A minor seven. That's E minor seven. Now let's go forwards again. E minor seven, A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. And I'll play that without talking through it so you can just hear what the music sounds like. It's a really nice sounding chord progression. And all we're doing is moving in fourths and fifths. It's a series of five to one, five to one, or two, five, one. Or in this case, it's three, six, two, five, one. And just to illustrate that even more clearly, E is the third, A is the sixth, D is the second, G is the five, and C is the one. Okay, if you've stayed with me this far, you're in luck because it's about to get even more interesting. What we're going to do now is start altering these chords a little bit. We're going to start changing the notes so that it, we're, we're actually going to be manipulating the, the listener's expectations. So a 2-5-1 is a very 
common chord progression. We've heard it a lot. And we can, we can do what's called a deceptive cadence. Have you ever heard that term before, deceptive cadence? It's commonly taught in, when you learn classical theory, if you hear something like this, you've, you've probably heard this before. So that A minor at the end there, that's a deceptive cadence, because what we expected to happen was this. To go back to the one, back to C major, but no, we, we went to, to A minor instead of C major. So we deceived the listener's expectations by going to a different chord. And you can do the same thing in any chord progression that, that people have heard before. If they are expecting something to happen, you can kind of play with that expectation and, and surprise them. And that's what makes something interesting, right? Whether it's music or art or even in conversation or story, it's the surprise that's, that makes it interesting. Um, I know I was talking about two five ones before, but I actually want to do a different example. So check this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna play something that sounds nice, but not especially ear catching. I'm gonna go from the C major to E minor seven to an A minor seven. I'll do that again. C major seven, E minor seven, A minor seven. It's a, nice, it's a nice chord progression, but I want to make it more interesting. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to change some of the notes on that, that E minor 7 chord. Instead of playing E minor 7, I'm going to play E dominant 7. Subtle change, we're changing that G to a G sharp, so now it's an E dominant 7 chord. And we're going to keep everything else the same, and let's hear what that sounds like. Wow, that really sounds nice. And um, you've heard this chord progression before. Uh, right, Georgia. That, that's Georgia. Um, I think Hoagie Carmichael wrote that, actually. Side note, it's not Ray Charles. I believe it's Hoagie Carmichael. Um... What, what are we talking about now, guys? Um, this is this is like the longest video ever. But again, if you're staying with me, good for you. We're going to keep going. Um, so instead of C major 7, E minor 7, A minor 7, we're going C major 7, E7 to E minor 7. Now, why does that work? It, it's not only interesting, but it works for a specific reason. It's called a subdominant chord. What the heck is a subdominant chord? Well, first you have to know what's a dominant chord. Do you know what that is? A dominant chord is when you go, well, we actually kind of talked about this already. A dominant chord is a five chord. It's five going to one. The five is called the dominant, and the one is called the tonic. So the, uh, do the dominant of C major is G, or G7. And then it goes to the tonic, which is C major. So the term I used just a minute ago was subdominant, and that's when you are kind of introducing a dominant chord that doesn't necessarily fit the key. So this is a non-diatonic chord. We're talking about that E7. That, that chord doesn't fit in the key of C major because there's no G sharp in the key of C major. So it's a subdominant chord. Now, here's the question for you. If you have a subdominant chord like E7, What's kind of the uh, what's what's the tonic chord for for E7? Where does five go? Five goes to one. So what is the one of E7? How do we figure it out? Subdominant or dominant? It's five going to one. So I'm going to play E here, and we're going to go down five notes. One, two, three, four, five, and of course. The next chord that I played was that same A minor, or A minor 7. C major, E7, A minor 7. This is a, this is a subdominant chord going to the, uh, the A minor 7. You can use the same principle in many different situations. You can get really, really creative with this. A very popular chord progression that you also have probably heard before is 
going to the four chord. What is the four chord in C major? One, two, three, four. It's F. So C major going to F. Now we can get there by playing the subdominant chord of F. What is that? What's the five of F? Now let's count up. If F is one for now, one, two, three, four, five. C is the five chord. Now if we really want C to sound like a five chord, we're gonna have to change it a little bit. We're gonna make it not just a C major chord, but a C dominant seven chord. So now we have that B flat introduced. So again, we're leaving the key of C major here, just for a little bit. Don't worry, C major, we're coming back. We're, we're gonna play this B flat and it's going to be a surprise. It's gonna be interesting. Again, that's what makes something interesting. It's including chords or notes that don't fit the key that, you're, that your home bass is in. So we have that C dominant seven chord and that leads nicely into the F because you have that five one relationship, that dominant tonic relationship. And we're going to take it one step further. Just, just like before when we were kind of working backwards from C major and we were going down fourths or up fifths, remember that's the same exact thing. So there's no difference between going down a fourth and up a fifth. Um, we're going to do the same thing for F. So if F is one, C7 is five. Let's go down a fourth or up a fifth from C7. One, and by the way, now that we're in the key of, you know, temporarily in the key of F, I'm going to be changing my key signature to fit that key. So rather than all the white keys, all naturals, now we have that B flat. So that's, that's what I'm playing here when I'm going down the scale. Um, so we're working backwards here. F is going to be our temporary one. Let's go down a fourth. One, two, three, four. All right, that's our five chord. Five, one. And let's work our way backwards even more so. Uh, going down a fourth. One, two, three, four. That's a G minor seven. So that chord progression again is this two, five, one that we had learned before. Let's put this all back into the context of the key of C. If I'm setting up this key of C major, let's just say I'm playing really basic stuff. This is all in the key of C major. And now, that was leaving the key of C major to introduce the key of F major as a temporary departure from where we were. And I did that by playing a 2-5-1 in F major. Now, yeah, I probably could have just made this video a lot shorter and said, if you want to go to a new key, just get there by doing a 2-5-1. But now you understand where that all comes from. Um, what else do I want to talk about here? We can... You know what? I'm going to stop it there. This has been out of control long. Um, here's, the, here's the sum up. Here's the summary. If you want to get to a new key, try getting there with a 2-5-1. Uh, if you take a look at a tune like, um, what's it called? Ornithology or How, How High the Moon, um, same chord progression there. The chord progression is this. I kind of butchered that one more time. So you have G major 7. So it's a series of two five ones, and it, it sounds good because you're you're creating context there. You're you're using a two five one to create context for the new key. Our key centers were G major seven, then we went down to F major seven, and then we went down to E flat major seven. And we did that by using a two five one to get to each new key. There are other ways to introduce new keys. Again, I'm not going to talk about them now because this video has gone on way too long. 
But if you want to learn more about how to create interesting chord progressions using techniques other than just like a 2-5-1, which does sound cool, uh, it's been done before in the jazz tradition, but if you haven't been exposed to it, then I hope this is a cool introduction for you. And again, you should be experimenting and trying things out and seeing what sounds good to you. Also, checking out uh, tunes that have already been written and looking at the chord progressions and kind of picking from what you like and incorporating that into your own compositions, that's, that's what you should be doing. Steal and borrow, it's really okay. It's, these chord progressions have been used again and again and again and again. And um, go after what you like. But as I said, there are other ways to introduce new keys and get, side, get outside of the key that you're in. Uh, if you want to get more information about that, I might make more another video. It's, this is complicated, so it probably works better one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to set up a Skype lesson for me, uh, with me rather, uh, we can we can go into this in depth and um, get you started with some really, 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 really cool harmony. Um, that's it. I'm going to stop right there before I talk anymore. I think I'm looking at the timer here. We're on like 25 minutes. This is nuts. So uh, thank you for watching if you watch the whole thing. Um, and if you just zip to the end, then I hope the last five minutes were helpful. Again, I help. Uh, I uh, I can help you with Skype lessons if you want to do that. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below. And please subscribe because I will make some more videos, and they probably won't be as long as this because this was insane. But thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next one. I'm Jeff Schneider, and have a great day.